What's up guys, my name is Brandon and Apple continues to pump out software updates on a consistent basis. And just a few days after the release of iOS 13.1, Apple returns today on a Friday with the release of both iOS 13.1.1 and iPadOS 13.1.1. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what's new in this software update, the bug fixes, anything that's changed at all, and of course the performance and battery life on iOS 13.1. And I will also touch on my situation with the iPhone 11 overheating, which I've talked about in my past few videos. So anyways, you can see here, this update is a very small update. It came in at 107 megabytes here. On my iPhone 11, it came in at about 96 megabytes on my 2018 iPad Pro. This of course is coming from iOS 13.1. If you're on iOS 13.0 or a beta of iOS 13.1, it will be about three gigabytes for you. Now, if we go ahead and check out the build number for this release, if we go to settings, general, about, and then tap on 13.1.1, you can see 17A, 854. That is the latest build here for 13.1.1. And Apple actually gave us a pretty good explanation of the things that have been changed and addressed here in 13.1.1. You can see here on the software update page, if you just tap on learn more, you can see everything that was fixed here in this update. Now, of course, this isn't everything and we'll touch on everything in this video, but this gives us a good idea as to the main issues that were addressed. So after looking at the change log here for 13.1.1, the thing that should stand out most to everybody is that second bullet point there that says addresses an issue that could cause battery to drain more quickly. And since I run this YouTube channel, I see a lot of people giving their experience on a specific software update and specifically 13.1, I saw a lot of people having battery drain issues. Now, I personally have not had any kind of issues with battery drain on 13.0 or 13.1 on any of my devices, including the iPhone SE or the iPhone 6S, iPhone 7. I don't have battery drain issues on any of those, but some people, actually a lot of people reported having battery drain on 13.1. So that's likely a big reason that Apple pushed out 13.1.1 here to address that issue. So just that change alone should entice a lot of people to update from 13.0 or 13.1 up to 13.1.1. Now, another big security concern that arose with iOS 13.1 had to do with third party keyboards. And basically in iOS 13.1, there was a bug that granted full access to third party keyboards. So even if you didn't give that third party keyboard any kind of access or anything like that, it actually had access to see exactly what you were typing on certain websites or notes or whatever. So that has been fixed here in iOS 13.1.1. So if you used any third party keyboards, definitely another big reason to update from 13.1 to 13.1.1. Now, one of the other bug fixes here is something that I've actually faced. And you can see there, it says fixes an issue that could impact recognition of Siri requests on iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. So I thought this was just me, but I noticed that it only happened on my newer iPhone. So when I said those magic words to talk to Siri, sometimes it wouldn't register. And other times when I would say something that didn't even sound at all like it, Siri would register and start talking back to me and you know thinking I was talking to her. So I haven't used 13.1.1 enough yet to know if it's actually fixed those issues or if that's even the issue that it's addressing, but I will report back on that in my follow-up video. Now, another major bug fix is the first one there. It says fixes issues that could prevent iPhone restoring from backup. So I think this is actually just for the newer iPhones because I've only seen this happen with newer iPhones. And I think this is actually what Jenna, I Justine's sister had. I think she had this issue and basically she just got like a white screen and her phone was not able to restore from the backup and it would just kind of stay on that white screen and she wasn't able to do anything. She had to get a whole new iPhone. I think there was other ways to fix it, but the main bug here was the fact that you couldn't restore from a backup. So that's obviously a pretty major bug and that has been addressed here in 13.1.1. And then there are two other bug fixes that I have not seen or heard about that is resolves a problem where Safari search suggestions may re-enable after turning them off and also addresses an issue that could cause reminders to sync slowly. So I never ran into either one of those or haven't heard anybody on my channel talk about those, but those have also been addressed here with this latest release. Now, another awesome feature I wanted to talk about is sign in with Apple. Now, this is not new in 13.1.1. This is just now starting to roll out because developers are updating their application to use sign in with Apple. And this is actually the splash screen you get when you are in an application that supports it. So you can see there it says fast and easy, respects your privacy and hides your email. Now I'm not going to cover everything that sign in with Apple does. I've already talked about that many times. I will leave a link down below uh, if you don't know how that works. But anyways, there are applications where it's showing up now. This is a screenshot I took from the Kitchen Stories application. You can see there up top, it says sign in with Apple. So instead of signing up with Facebook or with an email, sign in with Apple 
all your data, all your information is completely secure and it makes it really easy to log in. So it's really awesome we're starting to see that. I know a lot of people here on the channel have been asking me about that. Now, one of the bugs I had in iOS 13.1, I didn't really have too many bugs in general, but one of the ones that stood out to me was not being able to spotlight search. So I would search something in spotlight and just nothing would show up at all. Even after a reboot, nothing would show up. It would just eventually start working again, you know, like the next day, but it would not work for a while on my iPhone 11 Pro Max on iOS 13.1. So I will be testing that out in 13.1.1 to make sure it has been fixed. But if you had that issue, let me know down in a comment below, or if you had any other issues in iOS 13.1, let me know down there in the comments. Now, as far as performance goes, iOS 13.1 was fantastic. I talked about this in my what's new video and why you need to update to iOS 13.1, but 13.1 was more stable. It was fast had less bugs than 13.0 and I'm expecting iOS 13.1.1 to pretty much be the exact same as 13.1. I mean, it's just a hundred megabyte update that mainly fixes bugs and things like that. You're not really going to notice any performance gains. However, of course, you are going to notice battery life gains if you were having battery drain issues. But battery life for me on iOS 13.1 has been fantastic as well. I mean, I have been primarily using the new iPhone 11s, but still, even when I used my iPhone 8 Plus and my iPhone 7 Plus on 13.1, they had great battery life. And that is the case for the majority of people. But of course, some people do have bad battery drain on 13.1 as well. But that's likely to be fixed with this software update that was just released today. Now, I did also want to talk about the overheating issue with my iPhone 11 here. I touched on this originally in my battery comparison video where I compared the battery life of pretty much all the recent iPhones. If you missed that video somehow, it's up in the cards and down in the description below. But basically, in that video, I noted how at the end, how the iPhone 11 was extremely hot, like abnormally hot, hotter than any of the other phones where I was doing the exact same thing on all the phones. The iPhone 11 was the only one that got as hot as it did. And that was on iOS 13.0. So iOS 13.1, I thought fixed the issue. And that was until last night when I was playing a game and it actually started heating up again and getting really hot. And I basically had to turn off the screen for a little while and just let it cool down and start playing again. So I thought it was fixed, but I don't think it's fully fixed. So hopefully 13.1.1 will fully fix that. I will be testing that and I will be making an update video if iOS 13.1.1 did fully fix the overheating issue with the iPhone 11. Now, there were also people that said that it's just my device and that's a defective device or something like that, but that is not the case. I've had multiple people report to me and ask me for updates because, you know, some people don't want to get an iPhone 11 until I update them, and other people actually have an iPhone 11 and notice very hot temperatures coming from their phone when they're just doing normal tasks. So again, hopefully this update that came out today will fix that. I will report on that in my follow-up video, so definitely stay tuned for that. So now the question is, should you update to iOS 13.1.1? And my answer to that is absolutely yes. You should definitely update to 13.1.1, no matter if you're on iOS 13.0 or 13.1. It fixes battery drain issues. It fixes the major security bug with the third-party keyboards and a lot more. So there's really no reason not to update to iOS 13.1.1. It's a small update, but fixes some pretty major things. Now, as far as iPad OS 13.1.1, you're going to get the same fixes. There's nothing exclusive to the iPad with this release. So I feel the exact same way about the iPad, especially if you use third party keyboards. I would definitely go ahead and update to iPad OS 13.1.1 as well. So, yeah, guys, that is iOS 13.1.1. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and also subscribe so you don't miss my follow up update on 13.1.1 and the whole overheating iPhone 11 issue. And of course, a lot more iOS based videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.